and I now give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to thank the special representative of the Secretary General and head of the United Nations Interim Administration Mission in Kosovo, Mr. Zahir Tanin. Thank him for the informative briefing about the situation in the province. We also welcome the participation of the first Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Foreign Affairs of uh, Serbia, Mr. Dacic, and uh, share the concerns you expressed about this situation in Kosovo. We also note the participation of uh, Ms. Flora Chitako in our meeting. The situation in Kosovo settlement is inauspicious. It gives no grounds for optimism. The dialogue between Belgrade and Pristina under the aegis of the EU, which was paralyzed for a long time, now seems to be in a coma. Um, no activity have been happening in this format for, for a while, and the dialogue only exists on paper and through statements. We expect that there will be an intensification of the EU activities once uh, the new European Commission fully assumes office. And we expect that our European partners will be more productive in their work in this area and uh, that they will be impartial mediators. The nefarious practice of condoning of Pristina provocations needs to be stopped because that is what nipped the dialogue in the bud. Um, we note the um, uh, restraint displayed by Belgrade in this regard. We see no improvement in the situation in Kosovo when it comes to security and also the rights of non-Albanian communities. And we're talking about today, not yesterday, Ms. Chitako. This uh, situation characterized by ever new instances of intimidation, a seizure of property, vandalizing property, cemeteries, and the goods belonging to the Serbian Orthodox Church. Obviously, under these conditions, one can't be talking about the IDP returns or refugee returns. The incursions into the Serbian communities using the false pretense of combating crime, the incursion carried out by the Kosovo Albanian Special Forces, and the most recent incident was on the 16th of October. Um, Oh, time after time brings the situation to the brink beyond which there is a possibility of a resumed conflict. We're discouraged by the fact that the international presence, Kosovo forces in particular, are reluctant to do anything at all to prevent such incidents. The lenient attitude on the part of the Western partners to Pristina uh, helps the growing aggression on the part of the Pristina authorities to, to, towards UNMIC. Ms. Chitako, I noticed, listened very carefully to what was said by the um, um, Vice President Dutchich, but I don't think she listened to what was said by the head of uh, UNMIC, or rather preferred not to hear the statement uh, and preferred not to hear the conclusions reached by the commission, which was there to specially investigate the events on the 28th of May. But I will recall of the facts. Please listen to me. We agree with the findings of the UN representatives um, as regards the instance of uh, detention and uh, the beating by the Kosovo Albanian Special Forces um, of UNMIC uh, uh, staff, in particular Russian national Krasnoshokov and a Serbian national Dimic. This was on the 28th of May. This coincides with the findings uh, of the Russian investigative committee. Our investigators concluded that the special forces' goal was to stop uh, Mr. Krasnashokov discharg discharging his duties, which was fully in line with, with the content of Resolution 1244. They disregard the, his U, uh, UN immunity, despite the fact that Krasnashokov did show his ID. He introduced himself in English, and despite the fact that his car had UN plates, he therefore could not be subject to arrest and detention. We also shocked by the details of what happened. The Kosovo Special Forces dragged him out of the car by force, banged his head against the front car door, hit him many times by hands. After that, they used their equipment and they handcuffed him. Then they pushed him into the back of the car, his own car, and continued beating him up there. Uh, his ID was seized. Uh, his driver's license of a UN staff was also seized. His uh, cell phone was broken. As a result, he uh, had concussion. He he had concussion. He had uh, multiple jaw fractures. Not to mention the the moral trauma and the post-traumatic stress syndrome. 
And by doing this, the special forces of Kosovo sh showed complete disregard for the norms of international law, including those norms which guarantee the immunity of UN staff against arrest and detention. Separately, I would like to point out that what we heard in the aftermath of that from Kosovo special forces and from Mr. Chitako by way of justification as well as make, made up allegations against him were, could not be confirmed and in fact are disproved, including by the video of the events of the 28th of May. Distinguished members of the Security Council, this uh, picture shows how immature the Kosovo Albanian force structures are and how low the culture is. So therefore, uh, raising the issue of Kosovo joining uh, international organizations, including Interpol, we think would be mistaken and would be groundless. We demand that there be an investigation and that the perpetrator be brought to justice. We think that the Security Council should decisively condemn this uh, crime against a UN staff. But the most important thing here is something else. What we're witnessing is the determination of Kosovo Albanian authorities to squeeze the UN mission from the province. And in, in, in the north of Kosovo, there are no unmake left, and the mission as a whole needs to be working in a condition where they're basically being boycotted by the Christian authorities. And today, Mr. Chitako openly confirmed that the dream of uh, Christian authorities is to see the UN leave uh, Kosovo as quickly as possible, therefore no one would be able to witness the lawlessness taking place there and which we're, meant, we're talking about today. Of course, Mr. Chitaku would prefer for the Security Council not to discuss the situation in Kosovo, not to waste her valuable time, as she uh, they are valuable time, as she said. And, well, this is very difficult. It's very difficult to link up these acts of lawlessness. Are very difficult to link up with the image of a young, beautiful democracy that uh, Mr. Chitaku is painting here. Yet another gross violation of Resolution 2244 was the participation of uh, Kosovo security forces in the multinational military exercises called Albania Effort 19. Those who initiated those games completely disregarded the provisions of this uh, Security Council Resolution 1244, that is, which contains the request that any Kosovo Albanian armed groups be demilitarized and allows even less their participation in, in military maneuvers or their transformation into regular forces. This kind of an activity, together with a great Albania so called project, are very serious threat to regional security. Kosovo remains a welcome area for recruitment for various kinds of terrorists. The threat to peace and stability in the region uh, is uh, through the fact that the former ISIL fighters are returning to Kosovo. They're terrorists, they, they know how to kill, and they spread their radical ideas, and this is a time bomb under the security of the region. And we are baffled by the fact that, that the Kosovo independence uh, architects are trying not to notice this problem. Nothing is being done by Brussels, the EU, not only to resume a full dialogue between Pristina and Belgrade and implementing a key agreement to have a community of Serbian m municipality, nor did they do anything against the new Pristina 100% customs duties against goods from Serbia and Bosnia and Herzegovina. They special court in order to investigate the crimes of the Kosovo Liberation Army has not done anything, even though there is a, the third prosecutor there. And we think that this is a desire to sweep under the carpet and forget the crimes that have been reported by the uh, Council of Europe rapporteur Marti. And everyone who is uh, guilty of heinous crimes should be brought to justice and be properly sanctioned. The slogans that we hear in the Security Council very frequently as regards other crisis situations should here be made into reality. Let me say very openly, such helplessness of Christian patrons is baffling to us. And not one of them can tell us what it is that they're, being doing to be, that they're doing to relaunch the political process and make sure that the Kosovo authorities see reason. The Russian position on Kosovo has been consistent. We are for making sure that Belgrade and Pristina arrive at a viable and mutually acceptable decision on the basis of Security Council Resolution 1244. Above all, it should be in line with international law and be endorsed endorsed by the Security Council, because here we are talking about a matter which is ensuring in, in, in international peace and security. Pushing forward the so-called final normalization between Belgrade and Pristina, tying to some kind of an artificial timelines for, for us are destructive. 
everything that I've mentioned shows that the problems in the province are not being solved, they're piling up. In this context, we think that the appeals we heard in this chamber many times to draw down UNMEC or conducted strategic review are without foundation. Once again, we draw the attention of the UN Secretary to the need to carefully monitor the situation as it's developed, which, as the facts have just shown, is something that requires a watchful eye on behalf of the international community. In light of all of this, we think the Security Council needs to react to the to the current situation. We prepared a draft presidential statement, which reflects the issues that I have enumerated in my statement. And I ask the Secretary to please circulate the text of the statement to members of the Security Council. And we do hope that the Council will be able to approve it. Thank you. I thank the representative of the Russian Federation.